Uh, week four portfolio video. What is week this? four portfolio video? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to do something here. Does anybody know what this is? Do you know what this is? A doctor? Oh, it is! You did it right! Yeah, that's right, actually. That is the doctor emoji from Apple. Now, if this is the doctor, then what are all these people? The patients? There you go. You gotta have patience. That's the key to making money in crypto. Now, look, here's the thing. We're doing these portfolio videos every week, and we've been coming on here. We've been trying to force some action. We've been making some moves. You guys know we bought Optimism OP a couple weeks ago. That has not worked out. It's down 25%. That's a big hit. I think we had bought like maybe $750 worth. I can't remember in one of the portfolios. We have the 1K, we have the 10K, and then we have the 25K, as you guys know. We got these three portfolios. That's a total of what? $36,000 total. Right now, I think we're down about $1,500 total between the three. So not very much in the 1K, a little bit in the 10K, and then a decent amount in the 25K. You know, still maybe a couple percents down it's whatever but the thing is we've been coming on here every week and i've been trying to like find some things we can do well the cool thing about optimism is that i've been really looking at optimism where it is in the layer two ecosystem of ethereum and man i'm starting to think that's actually maybe a long-term hold i'm actually thinking about this might be one that could compete with everything underneath polygon it's not going to pass polygon it's not going to be better than polygon but what i'll tell you is there definitely is potential there for optimism to be around for quite a while. And I think that even though we made that for a short term move, it didn't work out. We're just going to stick in the portfolio for the long haul. We also have added recently in sand, which I like. File coin is the worst D. So we've added those two coins right now. We'll go ahead and pop the portfolios on the screen so you guys can see the 1K. You can see the 10K. You can see the 25K portfolios. You guys can see what we made those up of. A 25K portfolio I'm pretty good with. I'm still looking for a spot to add some algo, add some H bar, add a few other things, but we're not gonna do anything this week, guys. We are not gonna make any moves. Why? Because we gotta have, like our good old doc here, we gotta have patience. We can't every Friday come on here and be talking about, we're gonna add $25 of this and $25 of that. In the 1K portfolio, we just don't have room right now. We can't deploy the majority of our capital, right? That's why we're keeping the majority in stable coins. Why are we doing this? Why are we keeping the majority in stable coins? The bottom is not in. Bottom is not in. Why do I believe that? Well, when it comes to Bitcoin, think of a timeline here. We think about this being the Bitcoin having, this being the Bitcoin having. These are gonna run from having to having here. Now, how long is this time period? 210,000 BTC blocks mined. Now, what does this equal in time? Approximately four years, but it's more like three years, 11 months. So we're gonna tell you this doesn't exist. It does exist, sorry. So what occurs during this time traditionally for Bitcoin, okay? It's gonna be broken down into three different events, okay? So your first one here, this is 1.5 years. What happens in the 1.5 years following a Bitcoin halving? Last one was in May of 2020. Next one is probably March to April of 2024. What happened? Well, generally, we see it go like that. That's what we see. We see parabolic action for a year and a half for Bitcoin. What do we have next? Well, next we have one year. What happens during this one year? The price, it starts to fall, it comes back up, starts to fall, and it falls dramatically. That is what we're looking at when it comes to what happens in the next year. This is where we're at right now. Right now, we're about right here during this time frame. okay? Top was in November. This will be a year later, be November again. We're looking at November 28th as approximately, the date's not that important. It's November 28th, after the midterm elections, we expect Bitcoin to bottom. And then what happens? Then you get 1.5 years of this. That is not fun. That's not sexy. It's sideways action, very minimal gains. You'll probably have some spikes in there like that. You'll have some dips in there like that. Might look something like that, but overall it's sideways action, okay? So we are not yet here. When we get here, this is where we will consider deploying our capital. Now, obviously these four year cycles, while the time frames have matched pretty much exactly, you know, the numbers have fluctuated a bit. So what are we looking for? We are looking for Bitcoin to be somewhere in the 10K to 14K range. 
range. This is a go signal. When you see 10K to 14K, this is a great symbol to reallocate, I would say probably like 80% of the stable coins that we have left. We might keep a little bit in stable coins. It's never a bad idea. Yes, it's always great to catch the bottom, but you can't guarantee that's the bottom. Some people believe the Bitcoin can be going as low as $3,500. How insane is that? I don't think it's happening, but if it did, think about it, we kept 20% of our stable coins in and it did drop that low. Now all of a sudden I'm getting 3X my Bitcoin from 10K. Like at 10K, if I put in X number of coins, I would have X number of Bitcoin. But if it drops down to 3,500, I put that same amount in, I'm getting three times more than that. It's so pivotal to keep money on the sidelines. And when you're at a place where you're trying to figure out like, should I put it all in right now? Should I slowly move in? It's okay to still have some stable coins in your portfolio. But as the market starts to move up, there will be times where it will dip and you can short term start allocating some of those other stable coins. We would not keep 20% of the stable coins in to maybe see like a lower bottom. We wouldn't ever expect there to be a lower bottom than that. We would go almost all in, but you want to keep some. So that way at any given moment, if there's a short term opportunity to buy a gigantic dip, take ThorChain for instance. Okay. ThorChain early 2021, there was a time where what occurred is that ThorChain had a massive exploit. Price dropped dramatically. That would have been a great time to move those stable coins into ThorChain because we believe ThorChain's a good project and it's gonna go up over time. And so you can take advantage of those short-term dips. So it's okay to keep some money in stable coins no matter what. So what does all this mean? This means that instead of me coming on here every week and trying to force moves for the sake of saying we made moves in the portfolio, there's gonna be some weeks where I'm gonna come in and talk about some stuff like this and explain to you why even though prices are down right now, they're not down enough for me to start reallocating parts of my portfolio. Last Last week, we came in at like 21,500 and we made some moves. Well, now it's at 20,700. It's not down significantly enough for me to come force some things. So important that you learn like our good doc to have the patience to be able to sometimes understand not making a move is better than making a move. So there we go. That's what we got going on this week. We'll see maybe next week. Maybe we'll get some more downward action. If the price of Bitcoin dropped to 10K to 14K before the end of November, I'm still going to go ahead and allocate a lot of resources at that point. So there you go. There's some concepts trying to understand the Bitcoin having. I don't even know if you can read any of this. According to some handwriting analysis says I'm a psycho. That's all I got. Be blessed.